So let's think of what's going on here. Abram goes out to war with 318 of his men and a bunch of his allies, and they bring all this stuff back, gold and silver and grain and slaves and, and civilians who aren't slaves, and they bring it back in this big caravan, this big gr group of, um, you know, a train of stuff, right, of, of mules and camels are bringing all the stuff back. And they're bringing it back from north of Damascus. And the king of Sodom comes out and Abram gives him 10% of that stuff. It wasn't Abram's to give. <laughs> and then he gives it. And then he says to the king of Sodom, oh, but I don't want anything from you. But I just but gave 10% of your stuff to the king of Salem. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And so what Rabbi David Kimchi, quoting Rabbi Joseph Kimchi says, makes a lot more sense to me. And I think that's what Pseudo Jonathan was saying. He gave a tenth of everything that he, Abram, brought back. Abram doesn't have anything to give. Melchizedek is saying, oh, thank you, Abram, for bringing back the stuff you brought back. Here's 10% of what you brought back. Here's your finder's fee. That's what Pseudo Jonathan seems to be saying. Yes. Although admittedly, it's still a bit ambiguous. David Kimchi and Joseph Kimchi in the 11th and 12th century, uh, or in the 12th century, uh, they're not ambiguous at all. It's very clear what they're saying. It does, they're saying it doesn't make any sense. What does Abraham have to give? He's brought back other people's stuff. Unless he's saying, hey, this is all mine now. And the king of Sodom says, okay, that's all yours. But you know what? I'm going to let you keep what's yours. Just give me the people back so I can tax them, right? That, that's the standard interpretation that Rashi brings. But Rabbi David Kimchi is like, wait a minute, where's Abraham is giving 10% to the king of Salem out of stuff that includes stuff from the king of Sodom where he doesn't want a shoelace from? <laughs> so that would be like saying, I'm going to go rob a bank and I'm going to go to my church, I'm going to go to my synagogue, and I'm going to give a tithe out of what I robbed from the bank to the church or the synagogue. Even though it doesn't belong to you. That's ill-gotten gain. And Abram going out to retrieve this stuff, he doesn't think that's all his. He knows he's taken stuff that was stolen. If I retrieve stolen stuff, it's not mine, it's whoever it belongs to. They wanna give me a finder fee? Hey, that's a nice thing to do. I risked my life and my people, my, my soldiers' lives. I appreciate the finder's fee. Now here's an interesting question that I don't have an answer to. How does David Kimchi know the finder's fee is 10%? That's a good question. And I looked for answers and I couldn't find it. There are discussions in rabbinical literature that if you find somebody's lost property and you have to give up your hard-earned time and effort, and what do I mean by that? So you know, the classic thing in Israel is, and we see this in the Tanakh, right? Um, there's a cow, I see it wandering through the field. So I'm plowing my field or I'm harvesting my field and I stop harvesting my field and I go chasing after that guy's cow and I return it to him. So according to the rabbis, you're allowed to take a finder's fee for that. The Torah doesn't say that, but the custom was that you should get a finder's fee for your lost time and effort. Okay, otherwise you would have been working. I'm gonna keep working at my job. I don't, I don't have time to go and get that guy's. And look, this is also a discussion in the Talmud. If your time is more valuable than his cow, according to the rabbis, <laughs> or your dignity, it's beneath your dignity go chasing after a cow through the mud. They also talk about that in the Talmud. Wow. Then you don't have to go chase after the cow. The Torah doesn't say that. That's what the rabbis say. So this was some sort of a custom that he knew about that there's a 10% finder's fee, which is interesting. Don't we have that concept today of a finder's fee? I think so. It's Some not a law, but it is a custom. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go on. Next rabbi, 1145 to 1195 in France, is a rabbi named Joseph Bechor Shor. Joseph Bechor Shor. And he's commenting, and he gave him a tithe of everything. He says, out of the captives in war booty, because he was a priest to the Most High God. So Yosef Bechor Shor, he's with Rashi. He's in Rashi's camp. It's Avram who's taking 10% of the stuff that isn't his, that he brought back as war booty, he's giving, including the king of Sodom's stuff, he's giving that to Melchizedek, 10% of that stuff to Melchizedek. So imagine this, Abram says, oh, I don't want anything from you, king of Sodom. By the way, I've already given some of it away. <laughs> That's how they're interpreting it. There's another rabbi who lived around 1220 to 1260 in France. He's known popularly as Chizkuni, but his name was Hezekiah ben Manoach. And he wrote as follows, and he gave him uh, Melchizedek to Abram, a tithe of everything. So he agrees with Rabbi David Kimchi. 
And then he's and then he brings in new information that we didn't have. To hear the rest of this conversation, head over to nehemiaswall.com and become a support team member today.